as uh, uh, Miva said, we're starting a new series uh, this week, uh, Keys to a Life of Joy and Fulfillment. So we've been talking about money, and now we figured, well, let's move on to joy and fulfillment in our life. So in researching this, I, I came up with a couple of different theories. You know, there's different theories on how can we have a life of joy and fulfillment. And I found one interesting um, uh, theory or approach uh, from George Carlin, uh, you know, the famous theologian. Um, he said, I want to live my life backwards next time. So he says, think about it. He says, you start out dead and get that out of the way. Then you wake up in, in a nursing home and every day you feel better and better and better. Right? And then you get kicked out of the nursing home because you're too healthy. And then you enjoy your retirement for a while and ends up with collecting all this money for your pension. And then you work and then you start work. But you start work with this golden watch for your retirement benefit, right? And then you work for 40 years until finally you're too young to work anymore. And so then you go back, you're ready for high school and all the excitement and adventure and that the youth has, you know, full of energy, you know, more energy than you ever thought you could have, but also with all the wisdom and experience that you had from the past. Then you go to primary school and you become a kid and you play and you have no responsibilities. Now life is fun. Your parents are wonderful. Uh, you become a baby. Right? Oh, and everything's taken care of you. You know, you just, you're hungry, you scream, and they get fed, and you change. Don't have to worry about going to the bathroom anymore. You know, everyone takes care of you. And then you spend at least nine months in floating, in peaceful luxury, <laughs> in a, a spa like conditions with central heating and, and piped room service on tap. You know, right, you know, all, and then finally you finish off your life with your mom and dad making love. <laughs> what a way to go, huh? <laughs> so this is George Carlin's approach. Now, uh, sounds pretty good, but I don't think we can make that. So as an alternative, let's look at how practically we can find that joy and fulfillment in our life. Uh, over the last uh, uh, couple of weeks, on a couple of occasions, uh, one uh, by Reverend Thompson, and then uh, later because of uh, an event we were doing, we needed to have a clear statement of what's the, 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 the mission of this, your church, of Sacramento Valley Family Church. And so I looked at some of the, we, we've drafted a bunch of them over the years, actually. I looked at the one that we drafted um, uh, a year or so ago with the, the council and ones we've done before, and then summarized it and came, you know, just to something that I had something to offer. With this, our church, we want our church to be an environment that cultivates and nurtures our divine nature and supports us in building loving families, loving communities, a nation that brings God's love and healing and God's blessing to the rest of the world. Sounds pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So even when we come to Sunday service, the, the music... Right? Isn't it inspiring and nourishing, uplifting to see you know, the, the, the band performing, right? They sing songs that touch our heart, that move our heart, that, that, that stimulate us to aspire higher, right? Ain't no mountain <laughs> high enough to stop us, right? And, and also hopefully the sermon is giving you some food for thought. But also the fellowship that we have, the potluck time where we invest in each other, sharing, hearing each other's ideas, dreams, what's going on in our life, and supporting each other, creating that kind of environment. Now, sometimes we need to pay attention to make sure that we're really doing that, but that's what we're committed to, as in our environment and, and in our community. Well, for the next six Sundays, we're going to be exploring keys to a life of joy and fulfillment. And it's something that all of us want, all of us long for, but easily slips out of our hands. So this week, we're starting off with ownership. Now, that's kind of an unusual place to start. So, But we'll dive into that in, in a minute. The divine principle, it, it talks about this purpose of life and, and you know the hope that we all have for joy in our life. 
Actually, it's interesting. The divine principle um, talks about joy in our relationship with God, joy in our relationship with people, and joy in our relationship with all things of creation. Right? What do we call these? The three great purposes of our life. Right? To become a mature individual who knows and experiences God and God's love. Uh, uh, in a family, we share love as a family and then with the community, nation, and world with people. And our dominion, our love, and care for things in creation, which we spent the last six weeks talking about, our do- being lords over creation. So the divine principle starts out with everyone is struggling to attain happiness and avoid misfortune. Struggling? Hmm. People seek for the joy that can rapture their original mind. This is the human condition. We grow along. Get this. This is very <laughs> a poetic li- uh, language, right? We grope along exhausting paths to cast off the shadow of death and search for the light of life. Anybody have that experience lately? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was working on this sermon. I kind of groping through darkness. <laughs> Taking care of work. You know, sometimes at work it's just, oh, I'm groping through darkness trying to find the light. In our lives, we do that a lot, right? Now, that's not God's original design for us. Now, in the divine principle, lots of places he talks about our purpose is joy. Here's uh, from also from the principle of creation. He says, created them, meaning God created us, in God's image. Because it was his intention to share joy with them. To share joy with us. The individual feels joy, and likewise, God feels joy. Later on, God, the eternal subject partner, wanted to share eternal joy with human beings as his object partners. Get that? Partners. God wants us to be partners with him. And God created us to live eternally so we could eternally experience joy through that loving relationship with God. Sometimes we get glimpses of that, right? We get tastes of it. But so often struggling to be there. Uh, actually, Father Moon talks a lot about this ideal of joy. Uh, this is also from the Chung Sung Young. Father Moon says, Having created people, God's intention was to nurture them and elevate them. As, to elevate them as individuals who possess love on behalf of God, the Lord of the cosmos. So he elevates us to a place even higher than God and to make them owners. And I say I emphasize the word owners because that's, that's our goal. That's God's design and plan for us. Now, the reality is we're not in that situation. We're struggling to find happiness and to avoid misfortune. Right, here's how the divine principle describes it. It says, those who once belonged to God fell under the sway of false love after deviating from the path of, of the true path of love. Although they were created in the principle of ownership based in love, they were destroyed by fallen love. So as we talk about the keys to a life of joy and fulfillment, we're going to have to take on this issue of, of ownership. And you know, ownership it's used a lot. Father Moon used the word owners, be true love owners, ownership all the time. Even in our motto, right? That we say every day. What's the, the motto? Let us become true owners. owners, right? Owners of the heavenly kingdom. What does that mean? <laughs> How do I own the heavenly kingdom? Right? Even in a family pledge, you know, every morning. So, uh, our family, as the owners of the heavenly kingdom, owners of Chono Gook, Owners? What in the world does that mean? It's kind of an unusual usage of the word from what we're used to thinking about. Actually, here's a definition. Ownership means to have full claim, full authority, to have power, uh, dominion, to have possession, uh, to have responsibility. Well, I want to focus on that last word, to have responsibility. This is, this is the hope that God has in us. That we become true owners. 
people who take genuine responsibility for things in creation and for our lives. Here's uh, again from uh, Father Moon <clears throat> emphasizing although they were created on the principle of ownership based on love they were destroyed by fallen love. So a fundamental problem in our life is this issue of ownership based on love. What we have in our life, in the world around us, is not ownership based on love, not true ownership, but instead, we're in this situation of lost ownership or false ownership. And both of those situations brings dissatisfaction, doesn't bring fulfillment, doesn't bring joy in our life. So if we think about it, um, how about things? You know, we, we, most often we think about owning, owning things, right? Stuff having stuff. We have possession of it, right? This is mine. Not yours. This is mine. Right? One of the first things we do as kids, we start to differentiate. That's mine. Mine, 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 right? <laughs> Possessing thing. Ownership is 90% of the law, right? <laughs> Possessing it. And, you know, so there's the legal rules, you know, there's a law that says, the law says I own this. You know, I paid money, therefore I own this. You know, I have control over this. I have power over this. So that means I own it, right? Well, Father Moon is trying to get us to see ownership in another way. Yes, all those other things apply. You buy something, you own it. You know, you, you, you have control over it, you have owner, ownership, you have responsibility for it. You know, the law says that you own it, okay. But true ownership is something more than that. You know, often Father Moon would say, you know, that food, is that food happy to be owned by you? Is it happy that you're eating it? How about your money? Is that money happy that you're owning it? We talked about that in the last couple of weeks. Is money happy to be owned by you? Is it happy because it knows, oh, I'm going to be used for a good purpose to make good things happen in the world? Or is the money kind of reluctant? Oh, this person is just going to waste me. <laughs> Our things, do we generally love things? The way of the world is, if I possess it, it's mine. And it's dominated by this feeling of selfishness, right? Selfishness and control. You know, how good care do we take of things in, in, our, in our environment? You know, our, our home, our car, our clothes. Uh, oh, maybe I should <laughs> take better care of my clothes, right? A little bit extra washing wouldn't hurt. Well, things is what we usually talk about when we talk about possessing. But you know, also when we talk about ownership and possessing, uh, in our relationship with people, too, it comes up. You ever heard the expression, I own you? You know? Oh, it's like uh, one of these typical things in, the, in soap operas and dramas. You say, I own you now. You know, I have power over someone else. We want to control people, right? You know, the, 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 the ability to control people. It's, it's, you know, slavery's been outlawed, but we see, see that all the time where people control and try to dominate. Sometimes we do that, don't we? Trying to control and dominate other people. Ah, you're going to do what I say. You know, how about how about you know you 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 have parents you know when you, your teenagers get a bit older you know you're gonna do what I say because I'm feeding you <laughs> I'm putting the roof over your head you know so as long as you're in my house you follow my rules right <laughs> so that's a kind of ownership right but there's something more than that there's also another side of ownership ownership of our relationships in our own experience how often do we say that person made me mad. Does that person own me? Does that person have control over me? Well, if we give them that ownership. But God designed us to be true owners. So that means I also need to be responsible and owner for myself. Instead of blaming, oh, it's that person's fault, you know, we, we, we go into a victim mentality. That's not being an owner. That's being, you know, a passive object, the victim. When God and Father Moon say, let's be true owners, that means getting out of that victim, somebody else's fault, it's not my fault, and becoming truly responsible. Now, how about with the, our life experiences, you know, our circumstances? You know? In the office, 
we always have this challenge. You know, we do a lot of we evaluate social service programs, and so sometimes we get a project that a lot of different people are working on, and everyone is doing you know working on something. I'm I'm building the database. That's my my role. So I'm the database guy. Another person is making forms for surveys and questionnaires. Another person is doing some interviewing and like that. But as as long as no one takes ownership or responsibility of the project, it's chaos. You know, I'm off doing this, and, th and then someone comes to me with, with, oh, but we have to ask these questions, and these, this information has to be in your database. What? Why didn't you tell me that? And then there's someone over here who's doing, gone off and doing, when no one is taking ownership or responsibility, then it, it's chaotic. You, maybe you experienced that in your family. You know, we, we experience it here, even here, you know, our challenge, you know, who's going to take ownership and responsibility for that project? Projects succeed when someone is committed to it and takes responsibility for it and makes it happen. Like our family outings, right? Johan, I love this. I want this idea. Let's go do things. So he took ownership and responsibility, coordinated and made it happen. Now, for years, people say, oh, it'd be nice if we did outings. <laughs> it'd be nice if we all the congregation went out and we did some family outing stuff. But no one took ownership, right? <laughs> How about the, this, uh, the event we had just uh, last weekend with uh, Imam Cosme, with the Muslims, you know? Oh, we've, a lot of times, it's, yeah, you know, it's really people should do more interfaith things and it's good. And everyone said, yeah, it's a good idea, it's a good idea. But then Ron grabbed it by the horn and says, oh, I'm going to go talk to Imam Cosme. I'm going to get this Imam to come to our church so we can talk. And because he took ownership and responsibility of that, something happened. Things happen when we take responsibility and ownership. That's genuine ownership. Now, also, I'm going to talk some difficult things right now. Can we take responsibility for things that we really have no control over whatsoever? Now, that's an interesting way of looking at things. Can I take responsibility for something that happens in my life that I really didn't have anything to do with. Actually, Father Moon says, yes, we can. We can actually declare ourselves as owners and people who take responsibility, regardless. The truth is, if you know, I'm driving down the car and I, you know, John, driving down the road in my car <laughs> and I get hit by someone, this, you know, now I followed, the, I was doing fine, but I got hit. Now, my life is now ruined, and I take and I feel like, oh, I'm the victim of this, and because of that, you know, my back is out, and this is out, and, and I don't have a car, and, you know, I'm a victim. As long as I keep the attitude of that I'm the victim of these circumstances, I have no power. I'm powerless. Life is just going to get worse. I can do a lot of complaining. <laughs> I got lots of fuel to complain, but I have no power in that situation. So, what are the alternatives? So, ownership based on love brings joy and fulfillment. And I'll put to you as well, it brings power in our lives when we take ownership of things. So, first, things. We think about when we truly own things, then we take care of it. We take care of our possessions. We take care of our car. <laughs> we love our car, right? We put the right kind of gasoline in it. <laughs> we wash it. We change the oil. We love our things. You know, our room. You know, we clean, keep it clean. We have dominion over it, right? We talked about that. Taking care of our possessions. We love and care for things as true stewards. So it's not just, I possess this as in its mind to use for my selfish purpose, but I possess this, I own this, I have responsibility for it. Pets are great for that. You know, taking responsibility, learning ownership, loving in a relationship, uh, taking care of a garden, investing in nature, taking ownership with love. Now if the motivation is love, then huh, again, do those possessions, do they like to be used by you? Are they happy because you're using them? The creation is, you know, groaning in travail, right? This is what uh, Paul says, because it's longing for the true sons and daughters of God that can bring love to them, bring love to things in the creation. That's our role. True ownership brings joy. And then 
the feeling that you have over, say, your car, if you, if you take pride in it and you take care of it, it's a source of joy when you see your car. You know, you go out in a car and someone's written about clean me and the dusty thing on the back of your car. That doesn't bring so much joy. That means, oh, yeah, I should probably do that. Uh, you know, that doesn't bring joy, right? But when we take care and love it, then there's happiness that comes when we're taking care of our things. There's joy that comes. It's amazing. You know, Renata, she, she moved back. She's been here for a while, you know, but, you know, when you move back, it takes a while to get settled in. Many of you know you made a move into a new house or something. You know, how many boxes do you still have in the garage that haven't been unpacked, right? <laughs> and so, but, so she spent a whole day cleaning and organizing her room. You know, basically she moved in and just her stuff was still there and some things were not unpacked. She'd gotten a bunch of new packages, right, from, shipped back from Korea. So, but by cleaning the room and taking dominion over it, suddenly, whoa, there's a bright spirit. You go in the room and go, whoa, this is a nice place to be. <laughs> it creates a different energy and a feeling for your room. Now, she, she'd been working at it for a long time, you know, because you look at her walls, she's been investing a lot, spreading her love on all the posters and pictures and stuff she has around her wall. And that's what we do in our lives, right? We invest to make the place beautiful because of love and care. And when we do that, we find joy. We find fulfillment. We get energy. We get charged when we take care of our environment, invest in our environment. How about with people? What does ownership based on love mean? The, mo the, the, the best example is if you think about uh, the family. Because, you know, as young children, we're under the complete control of our parents, right? They're, they have all power over us, especially when we're really young. No power. We have no power whatsoever, you know, especially as babies. No power. If my parents don't change my diapers, <laughs> diaper rash, here I come, right? <laughs> I have no power. But because of love, their dominion over me, they, they own me, you know, in a good way. And their motivation of love and care is, is where I have. And as I grow, because of love, I'm obedient. Because of love, I become, I'm willing to become a slave. You know, how about doing chores, right? <laughs> when you when you're young, it's like, oh, do I have to do that? But a truly faithful heart, loving heart, because of love, then I'm willing to do things because of of love and motivation. If I cultivate my heart of love as I'm growing and as we nurture that as parents. A love, in a loving environment, we're willing to be owned by things. Father Moon often says, the, who loves the most, owns it. You know, if you love something the most, then you're the true owner of it. He often asks, do you love America? If you genuinely love America, then you're the true owners. You're the ones who have to take responsibility for your country. And in our family. So, as we become, grow in love, Love has an amazing power where we want to be owned by love. We want to be owned in a situation where we trust and we love. That's genuine ownership. And how about us as parents? You know, our true ownership, caretaking, our responsibility over our children. You know, to a certain extent, says, "Well, look, my house, my rules." <laughs> but. How much power does that give you in your relationship? If, if there's a relationship of love, and if we're cultivating that heart of love, you know, then we, the children will respond because of love. And this is the hope you know, that all parents have, that the children will grow up and be uh, filial pious <laughs> children, children who are motivated by love to, to support in, in their parents and their family. Now, there's this whole other arena of, of ownership and responsibility, and that has to do with the way I interact with other people. You've probably heard this, you know, like I said before, you know, she made me so mad. So instead of saying that person 
owns me and made me this way, if I can take responsibility and ownership of my experience, where I, this person did this thing, and I responded in this way. They didn't make me. I could have respond any way I wanted. I have the power myself. Well, what that does is that shifts the power from us being helpless. Oh, that person made me crazy. You know, oh, that person did this. And I'm feeling crazy, but I'm tired of feeling crazy, so I think I'm going to do something else. <laughs> we have power when we own our experience, when we own our circumstances and our situations. Ownership of love, not power and dominating, not giving it up and saying, oh, I'm the victim. But taking ownership means I have genuine power. And even declaring, regardless of what anyone else does, myself as the owner is one responsible, this is where I can make a difference. As long as I'm a victim, I can't make a difference. It's the same thing with our experiences, with the circumstances around. Just like I said, with that situation, I'm in a car accident, I can blame it on the other person, I can be a victim, I can complain and complain. But if I take ownership and say, well, <clears throat> this happened, this person did this, this happened, I am the owner of my own experience. I can choose how I'm going to react. Okay, things need to be solved. I need to fix this, I need to find this, I need to work out this with the, the, the person I was in the accident with. But as long as I'm willing to take responsibility, I have power to change things. I have power to make a difference in our, our lives. Ownership based in love is our goal, is our direction. That's how we're going to find joy and fulfillment in our lives. If we own our experience, whatever it is, good, bad, and different, then we have power in our lives. As soon as we give away that power, as soon as we say that we're the victim, we, we lose our ability to find joy. It takes away our joy. I mean, it might give us uh, ammunition so I can complain. And that, sometimes that feels good for a little while, right? <laughs> Some pity party or whatever. But real joy and power and fulfillment comes when I take responsibility. I own it. Even, even I take responsibility as being the source, even if I'm not really the responsible. But when I take responsibility, I gain power. So here's a couple of key points for how we cultivate that, that attitude of ownership, that heart of ownership in our life. The first thing we need to do is look in our life, areas in our life where we're playing the role of victim. We need to develop a heart of responsibility over victimhood. Instead of uh, <clears throat> any, anything, you can think of any circumstance in your life where you feel like, oh, it's not my fault. I'm just a poor victim. Oh, poor me. <laughs> and recognize what's happening. I'm giving away my power. I'm giving away my energy by playing the victim. Now, honestly speaking, there are genuine people who are your gen can genuinely say this person is a victim. However, if their attitude is, even though I'm a victim in this circumstance, even though I didn't cause this, I still take responsibility, ownership, power. I am the owner of my experience. Then I have the power to deal with that challenge, that situation. <clears throat> Here's how Father Moon puts it. Don't allow yourself to be made unhappy by another person. Be determined not to think of things that way. Always think of yourself as being the cause not the other, other people. Now that's challenging. And, and you may have lot, we, have, we may have lots of reasons and justifications says, it's really truth, it's not me, it's them. <laughs> it's them. And it may be true. But it's a powerless situation. As long as we, we declare that, we are giving away our power to change the situation. When I declare, out of nothing, I create. This is an amazing power that God has given us. 
to declare ourselves as owners and as responsible, no matter what the circumstance is, I gain power over that situation. Father Moon does this all the time, making declarations, you know, taking responsibility for things. Like, what? He's taking responsibility for, for the fall of Adam and Eve? Wait a minute. Was he born back then? I know he's kind of old, but, you know. He, he's asking us to take responsibility for the sins of our ancestors, right? Restoration through indemnity of our ancestors' problems. Restoration of, of collective problems that happened with the society. Now, I'm not responsible, but by me declaring and taking responsibility, saying, oh, it's not my fault, I have bad ancestors. <laughs> That's why it, my life is so messed up. It's all my ancestors' fault, you know, <laughs> not me. <laughs> That's a powerless position, right? It's, there's no hope there. <laughs> I can make excuses all day long. It doesn't give us any hope or joy for fulfillment in our lives. So, <clears throat> choose responsibility over victimhood. Anytime, again, this is not saying that it's true, but by declaring it and taking responsibility, even if you aren't responsible, when you take responsibility, you gain power. Power to change things. Otherwise, it's hopeless. We're powerless. The second thing, becoming a true owner, is practicing gratitude instead of complaint. You know, the pity party. Complaint is so comfortable sometimes. <laughs> it's, a, it's not my fault, and this and that, and it's there, that person, this, 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 and I can, you know, get a lot of energy, right, talking about that other person. <laughs> I can make a long list of that other person's faults and all the reasons. But actually, if I cultivate a, gra a, a grateful heart, even in this difficult situation, Heavenly Parent, man, this is tough. <laughs> I'm grateful that you trust me enough that you think I can make it through this. Please, Show me the way. <laughs> I'd be really grateful if I saw the way through here. <laughs> see if I can see the way through the other side. But having a grateful heart, it lifts a spirit. You know, if we complain and you know get negative about things, then it, it takes away our energy as well. If we're grateful no matter what, if we look for you know, the positive inside of all the bad stuff, we focus on that, that good thing with gratitude, that kind of heart, we gain power. We gain uh, hope and energy. Here's how Father Moon puts it. He says, Be people who can cherish gratitude toward God and nature and live in service to them without complaint. Only people with such a mind can become true owners. This is our goal. This is our direction. How do we become true owners? over our environment, over our circumstance. <clears throat> Key is that cultivating that grateful heart. In addition to that, beyond gratitude, is the heart and cultivating the heart of service, of investing for the benefit of others. This also gives you power. When you serve, when you love, serve out of love, you gain ownership, you gain power, you gain control because you're loving. Father Moon often told us, you know, by loving and serving, then you gain control. Now, it's not a kind of control where now I'm going to abuse a person, but by loving, genuine love and service, that the others will trust you. You're building trust. That ownership that Father Moon is talking about is not ownership that you can grab or take away. It's ownership that's freely given to you because you love. Because you're trusted. So when we have the attitude of being responsible, when we cultivate a grateful heart, no matter what, when we live lives of service, finally, the key to underline all this is a loving heart. Look at every circumstance and situation with a heart of love, of care. Now, even more, a heart of a loving parent. As we grow and mature, we're cultivating that parental love. So in the family, of course, it's natural for a parent 
child love. But as we grow, even we should cultivate that kind of parental heart that really cares even when we're not in the parent position. For friends, for the people around us, we should be people who want to help others, to care, to serve, to be a benefit for others. Service and love. Here's how Father Moon puts it. He says, an heir of the heart, talking about love, is not an heir who just talks, or someone who merely appears to be an heir, or one who's having a good time, spending that inheritance, right? (laughs) But rather, the one who takes ownership of his parents' sadness and suffering, agonizes and grieves in place of the father in place of the parents. This is that genuine heart of ownership that as children we want to cultivate. Our parents went through all kinds of difficulties for us. To raise us, to to, to try to shape us, to to invest in us so that we could have the best possible future. Sometimes we didn't like it. But we know that their investment was hard. And as we mature and grow, when we can see things from our parents' perspective, when we can cultivate that understanding, then we cultivate a genuine heart of ownership, of taking responsibility, of genuine power in the family, the power to make change in our lives and the environment around us. In that same attitude, we expand to all people, in all relationships, that kind of loving heart. Again, Father Moon, is always nurturing and encouraging us in this direction. How do we cultivate that true ownership that's based on love and responsibility? Love and responsibility. Here's how Father Moon puts it. He says, You can become an owner of Chonal Gook, meaning the heavenly kingdom, only when you become a person who can overcome hardships in the most extreme circumstances and still be eternally grateful, offer praise and the glory of attendance to heaven, as well as leave your descendants something to be proud of. When we genuinely take responsibility out of love, not out of power, not out of legalism or control, but out of love, take responsibility, the world shifts around us we can make a difference. I'm going to close with this from Father Moon. Father Moon's hope for us is I want you to stand proudly in the position of restored owners who possess a love that is greater than Satan's love. I expect you to fulfill the responsibilities of an owner with the the authority of a descendant and heir of heaven who has inherited the proud tradition on behalf of God, Jesus, and the true parents. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Father, Mother, God. Thank you so much for your presence in our life, for the, the vision that you have for each one of us as those owners of true love, who in this world are people who make a difference everywhere we go because no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the relationship or the dynamic with people around us or the heart, we have cultivating the heart of true owners, people of true love. We want Heavenly Parent love to be the motivation for all of our actions. And we invite you, Heavenly Parent, please look at our lives. Where in my life have I been acting as a victim? Where in my life have I been accusing others and, 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 being, and complaining rather than being grateful? Where in my life do I need to grow my heart of love so I can see from your loving perspective? Heavenly Parent, each one of us, as we face our challenges, we know that your goal for us is a life of joy and fulfillment. We repent, Heavenly Parent, for for many times when we we go the wrong direction. But determine this morning, before each one of us, and each one of us as we reflect, I reflect on my life. Determine 
to cultivate that heart of ownership, the heart of true love, to be those true sons and daughters that you find joy in and that bring blessing and love to the world. So as your sons and daughters, gratefully, we offer up this prayer and ourselves again to you. Amen and adieu. Okay, owners of true love, please uh, turn to your neighbor and share about ownership and responsibility. <laughs>